In this Masters of the Air Episode 1 clip, we see B-17s under fighter attack. The bomber's oxygen tanks are punctured, and shortly a fire wave fills the bomber's cabin. The intent of this video is to address what would happen in real life if a World War II bomber's oxygen tank was hit by a bullet. The B-17s usually attack targets at altitudes between 20 and 30,000 feet. In order to sustain life at these high altitudes, the bombers were equipped with a crew oxygen system. There were two types of aircraft oxygen systems adopted in World War II based on the operating pressure of the system. As discussed in this 1945 Army Air Forces Material Command document titled Index of Army and Navy Aeronautical Equipment, Volume 3. High pressure oxygen systems operated at pressure levels of 1800 psi and low pressure systems operated at 400 psi. The Army Air Forces switched to the low pressure 400 psi system in early 1943. The US Navy and RAF aircraft used high pressure systems. Both Germany and Japan adopted the high pressure systems as discussed in this November 1943 Air Force Service Journal. The U.S. Air Forces adopted a low-pressure 400 psi system storage tanks due to their battle damage resistant design characteristics when struck by bullets or flak fragments. The low-pressure cylinders are designed as a stress skin semi-monocoque structures where the longitudinal and circumferential welded straps share the pressure loads with the skin. The exterior straps function to arrest any battle damage reducing the susceptibility to a catastrophic rupture. They are considered non-shatterable. This is an example of a Model G1 oxygen storage cylinder used in U.S. bombers. These are the hoop and longitudinal damage arresting welded external straps. If a bullet is struck here, the damage will stay contained within this bay. A controlled decompression would result. Modern airliners also incorporate this concept. This fuselage skin has inner mold lined circumferential tear straps which are designed to arrest longitudinal skin cracks. If hit by enemy projectiles, low pressure tanks do not burn, do not explode, and do not have a tendency to rocket. A high pressure cylinder is rocketing through a brick wall in this clip. Check valves are located throughout the oxygen system to keep the oxygen backflowing out of a leaking tank. This is an example of the B-17's oxygen system. The two 400 psi oxygen G1 storage cylinders are here and the smaller F1 cylinder is here. Oxygen gauges and regulators are shaded here. Characteristics of the larger G1 cylinder are listed on this page. The cylinder's volume equates to 2,100 cubic inches and it contains 29 cubic feet of compressed oxygen. The cylinder is around 13 inches in diameter, 24 and a half inches long, and its weight equates to 18 pounds. Each B-17 is equipped with 18 G1 cylinders, as shown on this page from a 1944 B-17G model field service manual. Each cylinder can supply a single crewman 4 hours of oxygen at an altitude of 30,000 feet, whereas a smaller F1 cylinder has around 2.1 hours of supply under the same conditions. This image shows the highlighted locations of oxygen cylinders on a B-17 bomber from a 1943 Army Air Forces Air Service Command document titled B-17F Airplane Erection and Maintenance Instructions. The two smaller F-1 cylinders are circled here and are only used to supply the B-17's ball turret and top turret gunners. The waste gunners would need to refill this cylinder from the bomber's oxygen system. The B-29's 12 G-1 oxygen cylinders are all concentrated in the space between the bomb bays, as shown on this image from a 1944 B-29 familiarization and maintenance manual. This footage shows the G-1 bottles located between the bomb bays above the radome on the B-29 bomber. The location of the B-24's 22 G-1 oxygen cylinders are shown in this image from a 1945 Headquarters AAF document titled Pilot Training Manual for the Liberator B-24. A bullet strike on a high pressure oxygen cylinder could be catastrophic as shown on this clip where an oxygen cylinder was struck with a 308 caliber rifle round from a video produced by this YouTube channel. The 308 bullet diameter is roughly equivalent to the German fighter 7.92 mm bullet diameter. The U.S. Army Air Forces tested the 400 psi oxygen cylinders without the reinforcing straps and with the reinforcing straps, as seen in this footage. New segmented type oxygen tank developed by Army Air Forces for use in aircraft proves shatterproof when punctured by anti-aircraft fire. 
All type oxygen tanks with a shell made all in one piece shatter upon being hit by a burst of 50 caliber machine gun fire. Parts from a shattered tank. Firing at a new type segmented tank. Oxygen escapes through bullet holes, but there is no explosion. The compartmentation prevents shattering because it confines stresses to the segment punctured by the bullet. The reinforced G1 cylinder was punctured and the result was a slow decompression. The event was not catastrophic like the puncture of either a high pressure or unreinforced low pressure tank. So let's go back and check for accuracy the Masters of the Air Episode 1 Oxygen Tank Bullet Strike Clip. The attack occurred in June 1943. By freeze framing, we can identify the attacking fighter as an ME-109. This table lists the armaments adopted by various German fighters by Europe Service from an August 1945 United States Strategic Bombing Survey report titled Armaments and Air War 1939-1945. The first column is the Europe Service. The subsequent columns are the fighter's name and armaments evolution. The ME-109's armament during the summer of 1943 equates to two 7.92mm caliber machine guns and a single MG-151 20mm autocannon. A 7.92mm size bullet is roughly equivalent to the U.S. 30 caliber size. The bomber's G1 tank was struck by the ME-109 7.92mm bullet about here from a head-on attack, and the oxygen gases leaked from the cylinder without case rupture. The clip's escaping oxygen matches what we would expect to observe. The subsequent cabin fire is a mystery. Oxygen will not burn, however, flammable materials will burn more readily in an oxygen-rich environment. It is unclear the source of the flammable vapors that caused the large engulfing cabin fire. B-17 fuel tanks are self-sealing, and if they do leak, the vapor should vent out of the wing's upper panel louvers. The B-17's wing route to body panels would have to have massive damage for sufficient fuel vapors to migrate into the cabin and ignite like in the clip. An engulfing fire is much more likely on a B-24 since the wing tanks are positioned over the fuselage as seen on this image representing the B-24 bomber's fuel tanks from a 1942 B-24D flight manual. Any viewer speculation regarding either the fuel source or plausibility of the clip. In summary, the U.S. Army Air Forces adopted a low-pressure oxygen system to reduce oxygen cylinder explosive decompression. The oxygen tanks were designed with damage-arresting features so the oxygen cylinders will leak, not burst. Testing shows damage sustained by either high-pressure tanks or unreinforced low-pressure tanks catastrophically rupture if struck by a bullet. High-pressure tanks also act like a missile which, unless restrained, will cause internal damage. The Masters of the Air Episode 1 clip accurately represented the escaping oxygen from the G1 cylinder. The follow-on engulfing fire is questionable. If you've enjoyed this oxygen tank battle damage susceptibility deep dive video, please consider liking, commenting, and or subscribing to the channel World War II U.S. Bombers.